thefootballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our Big 12 Week 1 Game of the Week preview between the LSU Tigers and the TCU Horned Frogs. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams starting with LSU. When you look at LSU in this matchup, number one, they have to neutralize the pass rush with that ground game. LSU is big on that offensive line. They have the depth in the backfield to get it done. They have to run right at that pressure, and that's how you neutralize it. Also, they have to put the ball in Beckham's hands quickly. This is the guy that reminds me a lot of Victor Cruz. He's dangerous with the ball in his hands, as you can see right here versus Ole Miss. And it's also up to offensive coordinator Cam Cameron and how well he can work with Zach Mettenberger to drive the football downfield. Now on defense, can he get pressure from the outside? That's going to be the biggest question. And I also look at Craig Lawson, outstanding safety and coverage. He's going to be asked to cover a lot this week versus the spread attack of TCU. Now let's move over to TCU in this ball game. The Horn Frogs have just as much speed as LSU. When you watch these guys on tape, they're consistently flying around the football field, making play after play, and that makes them a tough matchup. And having Casey Paul Hall back at quarterback gives them a chance to be explosive. That's a key piece of their offense. He's one of the more talented players in the country. And as athletic and talented as they are defensively, can they consistently stop the run? That's going to be the biggest question the Horn Frogs will have to answer down in, down out versus LSU. The X factor in this ball game will be LSU's offensive line versus the pass rush of TCU. The big battle up front that I'm interested to see will be Lael Collins, the left tackle for LSU, and defensive end Devontae Fields, who is a freshman All-American and the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, had eight and a half sacks and always was in the backfield causing disruption. And if LSU is going to have any chance to win this ball game, they're going to have to get him blocked at the line of scrimmage. And the X Factor for TCU will be their secondary and how well they match up versus the talented wide receiving trio at LSU. You talk about Jarvis Landry, who in my opinion has the best hands in college football. Odell Beckham is dangerous after the catch. And Cajun Boone is a silky smooth route run. So cornerback Jason Verrett, who is a pro prospect and one of the best cornerbacks in the country, and sophomore David Jenkins, even the weak side safety Chris Hackett, they're going to have their hands full matched up versus these wide receivers of the Tigers. Now, here are some coaching points for both teams in this matchup for LSU. The wide receivers have to tie up loose ends. We know about the talent. We know how good they are after the catch, but they have to catch the football first. They have to be consistent. They have to run their routes perfect. They have to get open. They have to tie up the loose ends in order to be successful. And look for a boss personnel and double tight end sets. The boss personnel is bringing in an extra offensive lineman in place of a tight end, or they can go with double tight end sets to help run that football Downhill at TCU, they do have a size advantage. And the linebacker play in a short to intermediate passing game is going to have to be key. This is a team that runs an offense similar to Ole Miss, similar to Clemson. They're going to have to have a big game in the passing game in order for the Tigers to come away victorious. Now for TCU, first down defense is key. You want to beat LSU, you have to put these guys in second and long, third and long situations. Now zone blitzing Bettenberger could be a great option as he's a guy that tends to get the football out of his hands late and that could allow you to drop some guys back in coverage and fool him and come in the way with an interception or at least a batted pass. And you want to play above the rim. TCU does have a size advantage at wide receiver. You look at Ladarius Brown, a sophomore, 6'4", 200 pounds, outstanding freshman year last season. Griffin Gilbert, the tight end, 6'5", 220, and also Cam White, 6'3", 200 pounds, all of whom can clear out space underneath for Brandon Carter, who's 5'11", 165 pounds, who's their leading returning receiver that averaged 15 yards a catch last season. Now, here are some 2014 draft prospects you want to watch for in this ball game. You look at safety Craig Lawson, one of the best safeties in the country. He's a strong safety, excels in run support, but also can get out there and cover. Odell Beckham is dangerous with the football in his hands, whether it be as a receiver on end of rounds or even as a returner. Lael Collins is one of the best tackles in the country that does have the versatility to kick down inside. Anthony Johnson has been a stud for LSU since he stepped foot on campus. Solid junior prospect. And Zach Mettenberger, if he can put it all together as a senior, his stock will rise in the postseason. Now for TCU, cornerback Jason Verrett is one of the best corners in the country. 5'10", 180 pounds, has great lockdown potential. Casey Paul Hall, if he can stay clean off the field, he has tremendous talent. And strong safety Sam Carter is another fine prospect at the safety position that shows great range from sideline to sideline and also is a tenacious tackler. After some mediocre years following the 1988 season, the LSU program was in a bad place football-wise until the 95 season 
led by first-year head coach Jerry DiNardo, who signed the number one recruit in the country in Kevin Falk and led the Tigers to a 7-4-1 record in their first bowl appearance since that 88 season and capped off the 95 campaign with a 45-26 victory in the Independence Bowl over Nick Saban's Michigan State Spartans. Quarterback Davey O'Brien, whom the award is named for today, actually backed up Sammy Ball at TCU. And this is the guy, the first one in history to win the Heisman, the Maxwell, and the Walter Camp Award in the same season. And he did it in 1938, in which the TCU Horned Frogs captured the national championship. I like TCU in this ball game. I wouldn't classify this as an upset. I think not only is TCU a very talented team, but they pose some of the same matchup problems for LSU in space, as did the Clemson Tigers, as did the Ole Miss Rebels. The real key will be which team can get to the opponent's quarterback first, and I'll take my chances with the pass rush of the TCU Horned Frogs. 